Please welcome this evening's guest moderator from Billboard and Rollingstone.com, Mike Ayers, and tonight's guests, Tom Berninger and Matt Berninger. Hi, hi, welcome, welcome. Um, this is Tom, Matt from the, from the National. Um, thanks for coming out. I don't know if anybody has seen the film yet. It's out today on Video On Demand, iTunes, and in theaters. It's called Mistaken for Strangers, and it's really great. It's a really, really wonderful film. And it's, it's nothing like any sort of band film you've, you've really ever seen. I, I fell in love with it within the first 10 minutes of watching it and was really enthralled. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, the film, besides me loving it, the film also has been getting really great reviews. Um, but you all lived it. When you, what goes through your mind when you watch back on it now? Um. Well, I, I honestly, I can't believe it's actually coming out today. Um, personally, I, I, I never thought uh, the band would let me uh, release it. Um, Neither did we. And uh, no, it's. Uh, I look back on it with some fond memories and some painful memories. Um, not everything was very much fun, and it was. There's some stuff in it that was pretty embarrassing, but um, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> Great endorsement. <laughs> You'll be glad it's over. The whole no, the, the whole tour. I love the yeah. movie. <laughs> okay, Matt, what about you? Um, I, I I'm really happy with the thing. I, I'm really proud of Tom and and uh, and um, yeah. I mean, it was it, it was not a movie that we we thought there would be a, a movie like this about our band, and um, and it's uh, it's not exactly about our band, which I think is everybody in the band is kind of happy about that. Um, I mean, not directly, but indirectly, I think it's it's the right movie for us, and I, I think it's 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 it turned into something more interesting than a than a band movie, and uh, for that that's that was um, I think that's kind of what if there was going to be something we wanted it to be something like that, and so we were worried about what Tom was doing, um, especially after we knew all the weird all the stuff that he was around for and just the unflattering stuff. Um, but when the movie started to become, we heard that he, it was Tom was becoming more the the, the central part of the movie. I think that's when we then we realized that the, it was going to be more interesting. So yeah, I mean, it seems like the camera is on all the time. How much footage did you collect through those? Wait, you were on what eight months? Eight months tour? Yeah. Uh, well, I, until I was fired. Yeah, I was on. I was on for right. eight months. Eight around eight and a half months, and um, I collected like in almost close to two hundred hours of footage. Like fifty hours of that was simply just uh, uh, you know concert footage, but um, you know one of the reasons why I was angry for getting fired, other than the fact that you know I don't didn't have a job again, uh, that you know I had to face all this footage, all this this nightmare of footage of of this, the band, and I had no real story, I had no real uh, you know I didn't know what I was going to do with it, so I was frightened, I was scared, I was actually I was even scared to, to look at whatever I had. You know, I mean, I, I believe the original intention was he was going to come on tour, help out with roadie duties, assistant, assistant tour manager, and then, um, you know, bring the camera along and maybe shoot some footage for the web, the Nationals website, maybe a, a little a little web short if it worked out. I mean, you know, I, they got 200 hours. You don't need 200 hours, obviously, for a web short for the Nationals website. Um, but, you know, in the end, it kind of was a nice little accident that he was always kind of obsessively filming. And some of the parts are really uncomfortable to watch. And he has the camera on. And it's, as a viewer, as a fan, as just someone interested in human beings, it's, it's great. Well, I'm, are you talking, what, what's uncomfortable, Dave? The nudes and the naked drummer uh naked drummers you know sometimes are uncomfortable but no nah, there's a <laughs> scene where uh matt comes off stage and he's very upset with the band's performance and tom is filming him about some things and asking him some things and matt doesn't want to he's just really it's his job his job is to make us you know and you know just fall in love with his music on stage and he didn't feel like he did a good job and you know it happens he, a lot, but but it was that was just one of the uncomfortable yeah. scenes. But I'm just like, don't stop rolling. But he's like, stop rolling the camera. Well, you know, I, I 
I, I felt like, in a weird way, that like I wanted to use their fame f- to to boost my reel, and um, and but I was certainly not, you know. Um, the problem was there, there's I wasn't the documentarian to make a proper rock doc about about the national. There's, I'm not even a real fan of the band, and and that's, but it's true. I mean, but I in some way that's that that created the the best story. You know, I I really didn't. You know, I I didn't I didn't really feel like any other music was too precious to to make fun of or the band was too precious to make fun of and also and i knew that I really I, I i i first for a long time i thought i couldn't get fired because i was a brother of the lead singer and i thought i was kind of i, I had like a touchable yeah i was untouchable slightly and i think i got away with that for eight months but then then i eventually did get fired and i realized you're you also agreed with the firing yeah you had to get fired uh, he was a terrible roadie. Um, he was a, um, he was he was hired as assistant tour manager, and that's a really really hard job. And he was not very good at that. You oh, weren't. Yeah. No, you weren't. You're. T- um, uh, but uh, but he but it was but he had all this footage that he that that he was also collecting while he was neglecting that job, um, which I was I encouraged him to bring the camera. But um, yes, I'm I'm actually really happy that. Yeah, and I think you should be really happy that you got fired because then you're able to go and do some soul searching and then and and figure out this 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 weird movies which yeah so I think it worked out good for you don't you it it yes it did but it still hurts when you get fired it always you still hurts. take it personally of course well let's uh, look at a clip real quick that kind of outlines what the duties are for an assistant tour manager and it gives you a little flavor of the way Tom approached his uh, his job. I do mean that though. When you do die, it's me. Good luck. Yeah. It's just kind of. That's basically how we know when 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 Bon Scott died and in, 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 you know in ACDC, that ACDC totally changed gears when Brian Johnson came on board. So um, I have no plans to do that. Basically, natural is going to be in the lyrics of fast cars and fast women. Uh, less death talk. Um, okay. <laughs> What kind of becomes apparent really early on in the film, and you kind of got a hint at it there, you kind of start falling in in love with this guy. Um, And, you know, going into it, you think you're watching, you know, a a film about the national. And suddenly it becomes a film all about Tom. And... uh, and he, I don't know, he becomes this, he, it's a very humanizing portrait of a person who is thrown into a job that he might not know how to do, which a lot of us probably have experience doing. This one just happens to be in Europe with a very large uh, rock band. And uh, I don't know, you, I, for me, I really started to relate immediately to him. Um, I don't know. Uh, the the film also becomes really, as you can probably tell, a lot about their relationship. Their their relationship. I don't know. What do you guys think about um, you know your relationship through this period, that experience? Well, I mean, for me, like I was, he took me on tour when I was in between jobs. Yeah, and I was uh, living at home, um, and. Uh, and through this movie, and I think um, I think a lot of my friends gave me encouragement to put a lot of the embarrassing stuff, you know, because I, I was having a hard time. I was in my late twenties, and I had still just I was going through. I, I I just I I don't know. I wasn't satisfied with how I was feeling about myself, and and I suffered from depression. But I think everybody suffers from depression um, in some way, um, but. You know, I I, um, I felt creatively lost. I felt, I just felt that uh, I, I, I kept comparing myself to others at this time. I was comparing myself to my brother. And not in a jealous way, but just constantly thinking that it seemed like my brother made all the right decisions in life. And I made, and I've been making kind of the wrong decisions in life. And he went down, and he took the road. He took, he took the, you know, I, I somewhere I, I veered off the highway, you know, and, and I got stuck in some, some awful town. And I don't know if that makes much sense. But, you know, I mean, I was lost. And there's, I think there's a lot of people in the late 20s, early 30s that are lost. And 
Um, slowly that the movie, you know, became more about me trying, you know, just trying to find a voice, trying to find uh, happiness and being okay with who I am. You know, I stopped, I just stopped trying to be somebody I'm not. I, I mean, I, I think the whole thing, um, you know, I, I, I wanted him to come because mostly because I missed him because I went off to college when he was a little kid and, and I'm nine years o older and um, I also wanted to, to, him to see Europe. I wanted him to get out of this rut that I could tell that he was in. Um, and mostly it was just to spend time together. But then the, then the, 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 the troubles that happened on tour with, 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 with his job and then the, the, you know what kind of started out is, is another like a, a failure a little bit. It, um, I, 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 I think t you know when things went badly there and then he had to go, I invited him to live, move in to, to, to my house in Brooklyn with my wife and daughter and I so he could make something out of the, all this 200 hours of footage that he'd collected. Um, and most of it was unusable and not good, you know, documentary footage. But somehow because of that, he was able to sort of look at himself. Not, and not totally unusable. No, no, some of it was good. Um, but then, so he stitched together a different story, a very different story than than... than than he planned to do, and then and much very different than we expected, and it turned into something like I said, much more interesting. And um, I, I think the point of the whole thing is like I think we we started figuring out he started figuring out that failure is a part of success. You know, you fail and fail and fail until until occasionally you don't fail, and it's like a failure. All you know, all these. These times you 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 don't succeed are are in a weird way a step forwards nonetheless and I think and then also we also got to I started to understand him as a very different person than me and so I stopped trying to like try to make I stopped trying to make him more like me or you know I, he's he had a whole different a whole different approach to life and a whole different way that he saw the world and the universe and and himself and I think he I started just uh, um, appreciating him. For, for who he was instead of, you know, and so our relationship evolved. Well, you didn't, evolved you, we also had incredible fights, too. Yeah, no. You, I mean, yeah, we, I, I guess you, you started appreciating me, but, like, I, it, it wasn't easy. It was a really hard movie to make, and... Um, it ended up being about, about family, and I think that sometimes with family, you're, you're meanest, you know, to each to the people that you are closest to, and because you care so much, and the, the stakes are, are just higher. And so a lot of that especially when he moved in with us and trying to figure out this movie. And then my wife was helping him to edit and it got really toxic at some times. But I think all, all that led to a, a, a pretty good, good portrait of what it's like just to, just to be in the world and full of insecurities and just trying to find your footing in, in, you know, in conflict with, in family and stuff. So I, I also just started freaking out because um, I just knew that I was blowing a huge opportunity to to make something interesting or make something that people might watch, like at least fans of the band would watch. And I, I was uh, I didn't have anything, and I just knew uh, that what I was I mean I was kind of going through this weird crisis and um, with finishing this movie, and that's why I kept the camera rolling, and um, you know, and there, you know, I sh I shot everything of me just crying, and you know, because I thought. This is part of the movie, and and there's only a little bit of crying in the movie. But like nice. you know, cool, you know quote unquote depressing. good movies, good movies like have crying, and you know, and like so like here sure I'm, they know. do. <laughs> so I'm gonna I, I like I felt like I was gonna cry, and so I filmed it, and um, that became the movie itself in the, in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, one of the questions, and Tom raised it uh, a few moments ago, that you know we all probably have people around us that are just doing better than us for one one reason or the other. And Tom is each questions that during the film, and uh, you know what did Matt do to become this m musician that thousands and thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of people are showing up to and screaming their love for, and uh, you know what did I do that led to something different, and it, and is that something I really want? Um, I found that part of this film very very fascinating and also very relatable as well. Um, and we can kind of get into that in this next clip, especially what they were just talking about. I didn't know you were going to show all that crying stuff. I hate, I hate watching myself. All good movies have crying. I know, but like, I didn't know I was going to be 
right next to it. You're yeah, making right everybody else it. watch it. <laughs> you should be. You should be able to watch it. Um, I have one more thought, and then we'll open it up to the the floor. Uh, you do get a lot of great footage of the band. If you do like this band, you will get a nice insight into how they operate, um, what it's like to be a touring band, and right now how hard you have to work. They're easily one of the hardest working bands out there right now. There's a reason why people keep coming, buying their records. They they're 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 really great live um and uh, i was speaking to him a few weeks ago for an article i was writing and i was asking about new new material do they have any new material um because i would like new material and they uh matt said well no that's not how we operate right now we're really really focused on our live show and that is what is so important to us um so matt i was just Wanting to w wonder why the the live shows become so important over the years to 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 the band. I mean, um, it's 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 how we found an audience. I mean, we 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 didn't have any radio. We never really had any radio songs. Uh, we never got any like profiles in magazines. Uh, you know, the first the first eight years of our career, or whatever. And so the the way we. The way we found an audience is we just we just gigged a lot. We would tr toured a lot and played for empty places for many many years, and that's what people that, that people started talking about us, um, you know, to their friends and bringing their friends to shows. And so we know that that's that's how we got where we are after we've been a band for 15 years now. And so now there's like like uh, so many people are coming to see us. We don't take it for granted. We know that people are paying 50 bucks per ticket. And, and a lot of times people, you know, kids who, who save up and only go to see one or two show, rock shows a year and they're picking us. And like, if we don't deliver, um, we feel terrible and, and we should. I mean, it's like we're, um, and so th yeah, for, 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 for getting up there and, and leaving it all on the stage and m doing a great show is 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 really important we never we never phone it in but but that being said sometimes shows just go really badly and you can't connect and and so a lot of that happened on this tour you know tom was there for some of the worst nights and he he thought those shows were, were the most fun when, when when everything would go bad well um, I, I mean quite honestly that that was you know i learned I, I you know i i saw my if if there's anything that i got from my brother watching him do what he does every single night is that um even for he he they they would have good shows and bad shows and the bad shows are the most interesting for me to see because not only did that it was kind of fun to revel in 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 their in their public misery for me but also but also the fact that they the next day they have to do it all over again that's in and the, and they have to he have to have, they have to like act like that that never happened and then they have to act like rock stars again and um, and that's really hard. I mean, there are some embarrassing, really embarrassing. I, I thought for you, very embarrassing moments. <laughs> I mean, and I didn't think it was that bad. Now well, I'm to but also, and in, 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 as you said, like the the my brother and the band. Even though I don't listen to them, their career have have been inspirational for me f for the fact that they've worked so hard to get where they are, and it never happened overnight, and. When things were looking really bad for me in this movie, like the whole movie itself was looking very bad, um, I just kept working on it, and, and kind of his encouragement just kept working on it and working on it and working on it and finding the story and figuring it out, and um, and 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 really, that's you know, like they they became who they are is because they just never gave up. All right, let's uh, open up for questions. So where's the movie showing in New York? The IFC. IFC. Yeah. I, I might have missed that. Sorry if I did. No, 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 no. IFC tonight. It's in 15 cities, but it's on, on iTunes and demand starting today. Um, and yeah, um, it's in chi Chicago. There's a the 15, it's on the website. Um, but yeah, we didn't expect it to actually be a theatrical release, but we got really lucky. So yeah. Why not record albums and then perform them live? That way, so at least you can get a recorded version and then also record your live performances as well and release them since you feel that those are probably your best presentations of your, That's a good of your point. band. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Um, 
uh, I think actually the Fugazi would do that. The band Fugazi, they would tour and tour and tour, and then they would release a record after their tour. Um, and maybe we should, but uh, um, I mean, it's true. It's 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 we, we we writing a record for us is a very different thing than performing it live. Like we we write records and we write songs and we're like in our bedrooms and we're in, in this in this weird headspace, a very private headspace, and then. Going on tour is a is a whole different thing where where uh, taking these things that were these kind of intimate uh, you know sort of sort of uh, introspective uh, things of the songwriting process and then putting them on stage as a big performance in a show it, the songs change and evolve and become something very different and um, yeah I think I think I mean we're, putting out like a live record would be a very different kind of kind of record we haven't done it yet. Um, um, mostly just because, uh, uh, yeah, we just haven't figured out how to do it right yet. Right. Well, with uh, I understand the process of developing a song. It changes through time as your band gets used to playing their parts, and it, yeah. every night might be a little bit different. But with a live performance at, let's say, a year's tour, you guys have got it beyond tight now. Yeah. And, you know, maybe record just the live performance on the last few Record all yeah, the last no. five shows, and then no, just a pick the song idea. from the best That's, of those performances. I think the biggest reason was when we're done with a tour, uh, we all sort of hate each other in, in, in very natural ways, and nothing, nothing too bad. But like, the, like, uh, the, 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 yeah, and, and that happens in this movie a lot. You see, by the end, we're just we're we're we're, we're beat, and and um, and we all just kind of disappear and go off into our corners until until we start to the new songs and new ideas start to percolate. But uh. No, it's a weird. It's a weird process of of a, of a studio and recording and trying to write songs, and then you go, and then you go out on the road, and it's just, it's a really strange. Maybe it is backwards. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, Fugazi did it the other way, um, and and maybe we'll try that this time. Uh, I don't know, but um, good question. Sorry. Hi, Tom. Hi. So, question: At what point during the tour did you finally? figure out that, hey, I want to make this into a movie? And what were your challenges actually getting the resources together to actually make that happen? Like, were there, was there anything that was just like, oh my God, how am I going to figure this part out? What was that challenge? You know, well, the movie definitely came together in the editing room, but I think, I mean, I figured out it was going to be a real movie in the, in the editing room, but I think... On when he says editing room, he's talking about my, my daughter's room my daughter. when he lived... <laughs> Yes, just watch the movie. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think there was a moment on tour when I, I filmed the guys on the band bus, and they're all sleeping. And I, because um, if you're if you're ever lucky enough to get on a band bus, the bunks where they sleep look like little coffins. They're all very like they have little curtains and and it's all like mahogany wood. You know, it looks like it's like a coffin. And I thought that looked cool. And I like because I like horror movies and like heavy metal and and I kind of and I thought like I kind of want, wanted in a way to have them all sleeping like they're dead, and I wanted to kind of in a way kill my kill the band off, um, if I could, um, in kind of visually, and and so I and at that point in time I kind of thought this is like I've never seen a shot like this before like celebrities or even like rock stars like like Bono and not that not that my brother's Bono, but uh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd never seen like they, they know that Tom. Yeah, I know, but like just sleeping, like in a very natural, like drooling or whatever. And I wanted to find that. I wanted to capture that. And I and I knew once I did that, I knew that I have I might have something cool in there. I don't I don't know how I would use it, but I knew that only I, as a brother of the band, could actually capture something like that. As far as technically putting it together, it was like really, really, really hard. And I knew it was gonna be hard. Because it was only I only had one camera. There was like no, there was no second camera that I can cut to, like a reaction, you know, or another person like looking, you know. It was, and so this movie is very, very lo-fi, which is incredible. And I feel so, I just feel great that people don't really care about that, because I do in a way. I mean, I'm not a cinematographer, and it's so it's just a very lo-fi movie, and and the fact that people are still responding so well to it, you know, because a lot of people don't. Don't like black and white movies. Don't like you know if it looks like shot on a video camera, they just like kind of toss it away. Um, but so it was technically really hard because I had to like make it move and make it snappy, and I had help. I mean, I had help from 
his wife, Corinne Besser, who was a fiction editor at The New Yorker, she sat behind me and we created a lot of little scenes. And we, in the movie, you see a big, a big wall of ideas, like post-it notes ideas. And really, we, we cut this thing for almost, almost a year and a half, two years, because just it was only me uh, for most of that. And it was just really, really difficult to find the, the, the footage that works. And to be qu- brutally honest, we took so many things out of context to make a, a good movie. Um, and that's how a lot of docs are made. I mean, even we knew we weren't making a social doc documentary. You know, we weren't like making a movie about Iraq or something like that. So we can we have a little we we're a little looser with uh with um the comedy, I guess. So, but we I mean we we cut on well final cut final cut seven because I I that's what I started on um, four years ago. Uh, and so, but it was technically really really hard, but um uh. Somehow we got it. We got it to work. You know, is that what you were kind of saying? Yeah. Hi guys. Um, I, I've got a two-part question, if it, if you don't mind. Um, first of all, is Matt in regards to when that tour ended, who instigated the production itself? Like when you got home from the tour, was Tom? Were you already diving headfirst into the into the film and the editing, or was Matt kind of like, you got some stuff here? You let's moved get this in. done. You moved in after you got fired, and I well, was still touring. I, I shot a little bit of our parents. Oh, yeah, I, I asked my mom and dad a lot of questions about me and Matt, and put them on right on the spot because I I wanted to get down and like we're nine right. years different, so yeah. I, I was not planned basically. And uh, You're even surprise, but uh, but after that, I kind of yeah, I got started, and it just took forever. I mean, I didn't really take very good logging notes, and um, and I just had a mountain of footage and. Trying to find the story in there was very, very difficult. Um, Weird ways. The movie is kind of a lesson in how not to make a movie, um, but, uh, but, but uh, I think the main thing is that there's just like persistence and patience and, and you. I mean, he almost you almost gave up many times and like just said like you you were just you didn't have anything you didn't think it was going to come together, um, and, and and everybody does I think like we we've, we've been that way a million times with our band thinking it's not, it's not going to work or. Uh, I th- I think what happened though is like is is you just you just would you know you walk away from it then you would come back and it did took it took a year and a half for there was a we, them to we had a motto we had a motto in the in in the editing room my your daughter's playroom um, but we it's like it was um, we say everything is bad until it's good um, and. Every, and it really is. Everything is bad until it's good, and then you know it could take a year. And then we, and then finally, honestly, then at the end of the year, that year, it took six more months. Well, it, it, then we finally got like this idea that's this kind of arc, and like this could be an interesting movie. It's okay. It's like it's nowhere near polished or nowhere near watchable, but I, we have something here, you know. But it was for a year. It was just simply taking. This is remember like this time with me running down a hall. Like why don't we take this and put this here? You know, and we kind of put it together like a puzzle. And with any documentary filmmaking, it's rewrite you write the script kind of afterwards. You know, you know, and you know, this was just a fly in the wall. You know, you know, band documentary, and we kind of write the script afterwards. Um, and the movie wasn't finished. I was I, I was going through a really tough time because I didn't think I thought I was blowing my opportunity. I really wanted this. Is I was thirty one years old and like. Or, you know, like I just had to make I had to make something, and I had to I had to just go put all the cards on the table. I don't know what you what kind of analogy I'm trying to think, but like you know, you just drive. just I just have to had to roll the dice, you know, <laughs> and uh, and eventually after a lot of hard work, eventually after a while that piece of crap that I had, you know started to turn and had a little bit of structure, and then we just took forever and a long time just working every single day to make it a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. That's awesome. The, so, the, the second part was then direct, directly at you, Tom, is uh, the film itself last year travelled around a bit on the film festival circuit. I, I work down in Australia at the Sydney Film Festival and the Brisbane Film Festival, both of which the, the film played at um, last year. You, Matt's obviously used to uh, touring, but have you been, have you been touring around? Because I know it did a lot of the uh, cities here in in America. And yeah, have I've you been touring that's, a bit. That's exactly what I've been doing for the past year. I've, it's been awesome. I've, I am really lucky. I was his assistant tour manager, and I got, <laughs> I got fired because <laughs> I was drinking too much the whole time. Yeah, yeah. 
That's, that's yelling the, at me. That's the too sequel. Much. So I want to know why did you guys pick this song, "Mistaken for a Stranger," to be the title of the documentary? Why, why did that that name be the name of the documentary? Yeah. The, the truth is, uh, up until the very end, we you didn't have a name, and it was it was it was it was honestly the the, the night before the press release about about it being in Tribeca and, and opening the Tribeca Film Festival went out in Tribeca they were like listen uh, we, at that point we were calling it for the, you, the for those about to weep yeah and then there was, was a play on the ACDC album for those about to rock but since I'm doing it about the national I added instead of rock weep and I had a, another I, name was uh, Summer Love and Torture Party yeah which is another lyric but uh, it was actually a friend of ours who just said to us at the last minute, he's like, well, like, why don't you, I, we didn't, well, why don't you just call it Mistaken for Strangers because that's one of our songs and it just, it turned out, it's, it's a really fitting title. So the title was the very last thing, that, that the very last piece of the puzzle that, that fell into place for him. So, so thank you, our friend Willing, who, who gave us that title. But. Hi, Tom. Hi, Matt. How's it going? Thanks. Yeah, it going? Um, I saw the movie last year in D.C. It was great. Um, well, I was there. Yeah, yeah, I remember that actually. It was cool. Smithsonian. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't think it's going to stay at the Smithsonian. Smithsonian. I, I wish it Hopefully. did. It was a good, lovely movie. Great. Um, Part of their archives. How was it to meet the president? That was, well, Tom didn't get to meet him, um, which you see in the movie. You see Tom very disappointed. Tom thought he didn't get to meet the president because, uh, because like 15 years ago, he had got a DUI when he was in college, and he thought that the, that the, that the the General Security Council saw that and and barred him from meeting the president. That's not the case, Tom. Um, and but anyways, um, yeah, we we we've we've been super lucky to 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 um, to, to be involved. Uh, in 2008, we we were big uh, Obama supporters and and did some stuff, and they used some of our music and some of their campaigns things, and that led us to eventually meet the president and um uh, it was amazing i called him mr president i was so nervous and um yeah but um yeah and then a lot of that ends up in the movie so um um it was yeah it's, it was, it was we had a really weird strange couple of years and very lucky years as a band that we've been able to do the, all these amazing um things you and met meet the president people. twice now. i know i'll get you there one of these days yeah uh but um but um, yeah, I mean, it's it's we, our band has been lucky, and and and, and recently we just got to do, uh, you know, we, we met Werner Herzog, and he ends up in the movie in a funny way, and all this kind of stuff, and um, um, so yeah, I mean, the side the side effects of ha having a band have been uh, like these great crazy dreams come true and stuff, and um, and yeah, now but now Tom is meeting all these people. He, Tom met met like you know Liza Minnelli because of his movie and and Robert De Niro and all these people and who's who else have you met recently I met uh, all, you know I met, I met uh, Paul Verhoeven from uh, you did? Tribeca he's my idol and I got to meet him that's all I really care about is uh, <laughs> the director of Robo, the original RoboCop so anyway thank you guys so much yeah thanks everybody thank you thank you